easy part. Huh? This is the easy part. <laughs> Okay. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Can you hear me okay? This is a good volume. Hi. Do you all want to come closer? Please. That would be great. It's like, okay. All right. We've got an island of students back there. It's fantastic. Okay. Hey. It's all good. Yeah. Come on up. Join us. There's a comfy Join couch over here. Right. Well, welcome everyone. So glad you're here. We're here today with Lamar Whitby. So excited to, to learn about these paintings and learn more about the artist. My name is Harriet Hoover. I am the Associate Department Head for Foreign Languages and Fine Arts. And so we'll just be leading a casual discussion today and learn more about your work and your interests and all the things. All the stuff. All the things. So uh, before we get started, I just wanted to take a moment to thank Collaborative Funding um, for generously funding uh, this event and this exhibition. And thank you all for being here today. So I'll start with your bio, and then we can dive I'm sorry. in. Oh, yes. Just social media purposes. Okay. Can you take a picture? OK. <laughs> Yeah. I don't want to get in trouble with my wife. That's all. No, no, no. <laughs> you didn't take any pictures. What you want some action yeah. shots or just like a just, just the setting the scene? Yeah, whatever you feel is comfortable. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> Got to take care of home first. Absolutely. <laughs> all faces covered. Good stuff. All right. So I will. Um, I'm going to share a bit about Lamar. As an artist, Lamar creates mixed media works that examine his own mental health as he explores empathy within his past and present environments. His work is influenced by his upbringing in rural North Carolina, while also being inspired by his thought processes surrounding mental health and fatherhood simultaneously. As an artist and a therapist, Lamar earned a Bachelor of Arts in Studio Art from North Carolina Central University, a Master of Fine Arts from UNC Chapel Hill, and um, an LCMHC. Yep, all those letters. <laughs> Licensed counselor. Oh, Licensed and clinical mental health counselor. Thank you. <laughs> I should know that. <laughs> From NC State University. He has exhibited in various places, including the North Carolina Museum of Art, the Southeastern Center for Contemporary Art, also known as SICA, in Winston Salem, Scottsdale Muse Museum of Contemporary Art in Cam Raleigh. Art space and many other venues, and now Wake Tech. So we're really proud uh, and delighted that you're here with us today Thank and you. showing your work. So welcome. Thank you. Cheers. So maybe to get started, can you tell us, you know, tell us about yourself? <laughs> and um, and I'm also interested in that, like, when you became interested in art making, and when did you decide that that would kind of be a focus of your life's work? So. Yeah. Okay, <clears throat> so all of my life, uh, I've always had this curiosity about just stuff. Like I was always the kid who is why. If you told me to go right, I'm gonna really question how come I can't go left, right? So that curiosity and growing up as the only child, um, it just led me to a place of creativity. So I grew up playing sports, I think started when I was about seven, seven to eight. Uh, baseball was my first was my first sport. But I played baseball, basketball, football, all the stuff. But that was the as much as I love athletics and I I I noticed later in life that it wasn't so much playing the sport that I was into, although it was fun. Like, we loved kicking the ball and throwing stuff and all that, right? But it wasn't actually playing the sport that I was attracted to was the mentality. Athletes are just different, right? Where you train and you train and you go through the stuff and you're sweating and your tears and the bleeding and all the stuff and you play this game and you become, this. you build this resilience. So. I guess all my life, that's what I've been been doing, right? So to, to delve into art, I had the athletic side, but even with that, 
I was still the strange, well, not strange, but why not? Artists are strange, we're weird, it's cool. But I was always that one kid or the teammate on the bus to games and that sort of thing. I had my notebook out, I'm drawing. In class, when I'm supposed to be paying attention, history class, history bus, I'm sorry, no disrespect. I love you, brother. <laughs> when I'm sitting there learning about 18, whatever, whatever, I'm drawing pictures in my five subject notebook. So, art, athletics, that has always been a part of my life. But when I, I just to answer your question, when did I know it was how did it go? The latter question of it. It's like a, a part of, it was serious for you. It was something that you wanted to pursue in a more serious way. That was recent, like over the past few years. Like I've always been artistic, right? Just this yearning to create. But when I couldn't, right? Children, marriage, COVID, what, all the stuff. When life says slow down and you can't, that was the most depressed I've ever been in my life. When that happens, brother, you need to fix something. And in my mind, I don't know how, I mean, what you believe in, but that was me like, God is like, homie, I gave you something. You need to use it. You have no choice, like you need to use it because your voice, what you speak, what you think, Although you're dealing with it yourself, it's wild that other people are dealing with the same thing and you're not alone. So why not use your voice and your talents to talk and speak and share the things that you've been given? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. What's up? My mom always says, use it or lose it. Use it or lose it. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it is. That's so true. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I went to, I guess backtracking a bit, I'm skipping, but I did the... MFA, yeah, MFA and all of that because I really didn't know what else to do. Sports and art has always been the, the thing for me, right? People become doctors and lawyers and just all the prestigious stuff. Like, ah, oh, that's amazing. But I can't focus that long, right? I'm not reading all these books. I love to read, by the way. Audio books help. Mm -hmm. But... Yeah, you with me? Oh my God. So, but to, to study and just focus and do all those things, that's, that's not me. I speak, I draw, I paint, I create. That's who I am and that's why I feel uh, most free, vibrant. I feel like me. Yeah. And, I, and one thing that really, that you just mentioned that I think artists and and athletics has in common is that kind of discipline, right? Discipline. I mean, it does take discipline to be in the studio to sort of show up to, even if you feel stuck on an idea to work through that, right? Work begets work. And it's yeah. the same with, with um, playing or, or playing sport or, um, but I think that that discipline is really important. And one thing that I'm, well, that, anyway, there's a lot to talk about within like kind of the gestural abstraction within the work, right? I mean, these works are really <coughs> physical, right? Yeah. You know, in some ways. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, can you speak to that kind of discipline that you have, kind of have to have in the studio, but then also how, yeah, maybe speak to that, and then I'm gonna ask you a bit more about like your family life and kind of how that impacts the work too. The discipline in the studio? Mm -hmm. There was a, um, Getting married, having children, and like I said, being the only child, there's a, there comes a time when you look in the mirror and you say, nobody's coming to save you. Nobody's, although you have support and peers and all the stuff, but there's a moment when you have to look at yourself in the mirror and say, it's it's really on you because the support is just that it's support right it's uh, people have respect for what you do sure but you have to put in the work so the studio I started to look at it as a as a job that I enjoy mm -hmm. right if you don't create this stuff if you don't put the time in you don't sit in this chair right 
people aren't here to listen if you don't spend those hours, lose sleep, it doesn't happen. So the discipline, yeah, in a lot of ways it came from it came from the athletics. Mm -hmm. When you miss a free throw and coach is like, you need to run those suicides. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, it's it's time. You miss the layup, oh, bad turnover, yeah. Y'all, you need to run. Nobody wants to do that. I mean, I, I kind of enjoyed it, but yeah. So. Some things are there and they're always good for some. Yeah, 100%. So um, the, the discipline in the studio is me, me taking accountability for myself and stepping up as the, as the husband, as the father, um, just taking responsibility for who I am and what, I, what I'm surrounded by and what I've chosen to um, welcome into my life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And, and your family plays a really big role, not only in your life, but also in your work and the subject matter. Yeah. And we're seeing images and pictures of your family. Can you kind of tell us a bit, and, you, and before we met today, you mentioned that these in some ways are sketchbook entries or diary entries, yeah. journal entries, right? Can you maybe talk about the role that family has in, in your artistic practice and, and how that might show up? Yeah, I, um, I think a lot about how I was raised um, and having children to raise them, like how do you do that? Where does that come from? Right? How do you when these when they're running around and doing the stuff, whatever it is, when when your wife's talking to you, engaged in a, a serious conversation, uh, that, like where do you where does that engagement and action where does that come from? So going back to sports or whatever it is, when you're in tight spots. You revert back to your training mm. every time. It's, inev it's, it's inevitable, right? So my family, raising my children, being a husband, I go back to how you have to go back to how you were raised, right? And I think about who my mother was or who my mother is. She's the, the first person in her family to graduate from college. My father, self-employed truck driver, um, I was always raised with two parents, self-employed truck driver, that sort of thing. But I guess earlier in life, he was there, but still had some things to figure out. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. So in raising my own children, that's what I think about. Like, what do you draw from in those moments? Um, so, even look going to this toilet. When you're sitting there alone and you have to you you have to raise these children and be in this house, how do you do it? So that's where the therapy and and all of that comes in and making a better version, creating a better version of myself so that I can be a support for them. Yeah, it's. You know, I'm a parent too, I have a four-year-old, and um, it is interesting kind of finding those places of solace. Yeah. So I really resonate with the sculpture, you know, or just any of those moments where you can kind of pause and have time to process. Time peace. To time to, yeah, have peace before you show up in a different way. Yeah, you know, yeah, people yeah. That you're that you're responsible for and too, you know. Yeah. Yeah. There, <laughs> there are moments when you go to the restroom, and I'm not, I'm not sure how you, you all feel about it, but... You're in the restroom after all the stuff, and all you hear is, Daddy! Yo, you don't know what I'm doing in this bathroom right now. Daddy! What's that? Is that what attaches there? Yeah. That's me in the bathroom on the toilet trying to get a moment of solace, peace. Trying to get it together in my own head so I can prepare to be whatever it is that they need. Yes. Yeah. Because even, not just res not just talking about myself, but just people in general, that I, even clients that I have, men specifically, it's like, 
I'm having issues talking to my family, right? My wife says I don't communicate well. My daughter is, she's not listening to me. Why not? Well, brother, we're gonna work through this. But where did this, that training wasn't there, right? For the longest time we talk about, and correct me if I go off on the way left, but for the longest time we talk about uh, masculinity, like what it is to be a man. I talk to so many men who sit there just like that and come out and the world thinks that it's just huge superhero, but broken. That time isn't take that there and they feel alone, right? We need some peace and solace and somewhere to go to break all that up and I guess mature yourself and mature and grow that broken child, grow that that part of you that you really don't. This little boy, my son, I had to figure out who I was to raise that because if not I go back to me at that age and he gets treated the same exact way not that it was bad mm -hmm. but he gets the same thing because generations and it rolls over and it rolls over and it rolls over mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah absolutely I'm just I'm just looking at at these they're just such beautiful intimate pictures of your life right and this sort of um this way in that we typically don't see, and it's sometimes the, the messy parts, right? Like, so I'm looking at, is that, can you tell us, is that your, your son? Yeah. In the large painting? Yeah. You know, and we're seeing um, the laundry, we're seeing it's presented kind of upside down, there's some yeah. gestural marks, but we're seeing, we're seeing a very intimate side of your family, which is a really generous gift for the viewer. Um, and I'm also no noticing the, um, the mark making, you know, can you kind of talk a bit about your process in that way? Because I think that, I think that these works are are, are physical. They're also personal and intimate, and you're 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 giving us a lot of information, but there's also some concealment, you know. Yeah. Um, so can you kind of talk a bit about the process in that, um, you know, with the text, with the concealing and the revealing, and mm. sort of the intimacy of the paintings. Okay, this uh, this exhibit titled Amygdala. Who, just quickly, who who can tell me what the amygdala is? If you, what's up? It's that little part of your brain that's in charge of all the feelings and stuff. Yeah, that little, it's like this small almond shaped thing that says, if someone, God forbid, I know it's creepy what I'm about to say, if someone came and just walked in here, let, let's say dangerous person, just walked in, some people are gonna freeze, like what in the world just happened? Some people are gonna run away. And there might be this one brave person who goes after them and protects everyone. But in fatherhood, in, in being a, a, a family man, those same things happen over and over and over and over again. It's not just violence. It's, oh, my child is having a tantrum on the floor. How do you respond to it? Yeah, you go back to your training. When I was small, that might be a belt. How do I calm myself down? Look deeper into me and really understand what this child is going through. Am I able to do that? Is that as a parent, as an adult, am I capable of processing my processing this all my stuff to help him see what's happening. Cause he doesn't want to fold clothes. He doesn't want to put his clothes away. Right? It's like stone, put your clothes up. We wash them. Come on, man. Just take a few pieces of take a few shirts upstairs. Like you don't even have to hang it up, brother. Just take it upstairs. He had a whole fit. So I'm the guy. I'm the parent. I have so many pieces in my phone. Well, you have my phone. I have so many pieces in my phone of them just screaming and crying, snotting and all the other. I don't care. I'm going to take the picture and then we're going to deal with it because I need something to paint. 
But <laughs> but I guess that's that's just and I'm gonna get to your point about the Mark Mayer. But that's that's what it is. And to in my process, um, after deconstructing all the emotional stuff in that way, uh, I go to the canvas, I approach the canvas, and I use the canvas as a diary. Right? So the, the, the marks that you see and I'm I'm just infatuated with cursive, cursive writing, calligraphy, and all this stuff. So what you see is basically a diary entry, and I'm pouring it out. And some of these I laugh, I scream, I cry, I go through all of the stuff, whatever it is that day, whatever it is that moment. That's what it is. And I repeat it, boom, 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 just writing and writing and writing. And once it's all fleshed out, now I go with the paint. Now I approach you with the pain. And I mean, some of the same, the same ideas of fleshing, fleshing out ideas, they, they occur with wild painting, but that's with the, the, those gestural marks and all of that energy, that's, that's what that is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have to get my stuff out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. And, and we were just discussing how different, how different that can be with your process, yes, go ahead. You, you asked about the, you asked about the images being upside down. The, yeah. So, in thinking about how my, my, my son thinks, or my daughter, my wife, whoever, even looking at myself, right, I can see you here clear as day, right? I don't know, I have zero idea what you're thinking. I have, I have no, I, a lot of you I've never met in my life. So how do I know who you are? I can assume based on what you wear, what you look like, how you speak. I can only assume. But until I spend time with you, until we spend these intimate moments together, I'll never know genuinely who you are. So to, to, to turn these things upside down, I guess it's just a play on change your perspective when looking at him. When looking at yourself, when looking at your children, your, your family, like change your perspective. Because the way you see it is just base, is basically just what you were trained and programmed conditioned to, to see. Change your perspective, you may see something different. So versus seeing him just on the lying there on the floor and throwing a tantrum. Now, I've heard someone say it looks like he's flying over like some row houses. Everything changes. Same situation. Perspective changes. Oh, now we can look at it in a different way. So that's what it is. Yeah, that's really powerful. You know, thinking about what you said, that um, sort of your, your, your journey with your retraining yourself, re thinking about how you were trained, right, mm -hmm. how, approaching parenthood, makes me really grateful that we live in the time that we do, that mental health is such a focus for everyone. Right? Yeah. And um, so I'm really grateful for that uh, and working on that too, as a parent and an individual. There have been, and I'm sure I'm not, I'm not alone in this, but this, this is a special, this is a special place in time because throughout our history as a people, specifically in this country, um, this is a special moment because it's like one of the only times or the first time where we get to heal, right? I'm 34. So parents, grandparents, we know the history of this country, right? We know, and since things go from generation to generation and all the trauma and all the stuff is just like rolled over like this huge snowball. This is the first time that we're talking about therapy freely. Mm -hmm. It doesn't happen. It's like a, it's magic, like what? And then to be a therapist, oh, my mom, she flipped her top when it happened. Mm -hmm. What, you're gonna do what? Talk to people about what? Yeah. So, sorry to interrupt you, but I, I, I think it's, uh, I think it's interesting that we're able to have this conversation. And my children are, they don't have to have some of the same discussions. 
they don't have to I don't yeah I don't have to have some of those same discussions with some of the same discussions with my children because it's a different it's a different time and the things that I am dealing with or the world or whatever we're able to approach it in a different way because there's healing now right it's not exactly what it used to be which is well in my experience and with my parents experience and their parents keep it bottled up bury it down <laughs> yeah <laughs> bottle it up you you don't talk about anything that yeah. that happened in this house and if you're dealing with whatever not just talking about my parents my parents specifically i talk just generally speaking you keep things you keep things in this house and if you have an issue go pray about it go to church sunday Go, go talk to God about it. But what? You going to talk to who? No, nah, we don't go to therapy. You're crazy. Mm -hmm. That sort of thing. Right, right. Yeah, and, and how, you know, similarly, how did you find that you wanted to kind of pursue that as a, <laughs> as a, as a career? I right? have a great wife. <laughs> I have a great wife. I will go nowhere without giving her credit for it. She is a genius, I promise you. I just want to paint pictures and color all day. But she's like, Lamar, you really have a thing with people. I'm like, I don't even go to therapy. Like, what are you talking about? I do now. But <laughs> I'm like, what are you talking about? She's like, for real, you really need to, like, you might need to go like, try to be a therapist. So check this out one day, right? I'm not even answering your question. One day, <laughs> one day I'm, I'm teaching at this uh, at a middle school, art teacher at a middle school, and at that school, um, they would send students to me. Like, go talk to Mr. Libby. And the, the students would come and talk to me about whatever, whatever. So one day, um, a young lady came in. She was having some issues with her parents. Who has been taking place. Um, she's talking and talking and I'm like okay as a teacher this is above my pay grade like I you're going through some stuff man so I called the um, hop on the phone I called the, the, the counselor the school counselor so as the school counselor is making making their way down there and my, my classroom is just right beside the break room as this has happened, the, 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 this anxiety and all this is, is increasing in this young lady, right? And the counselor comes, and all of a sudden, like, it gets worse, and she's, she's losing it, hyperventilating, she can't breathe, and she just blacks out, and just, she's just having a panic attack. Now, this may be a little twisted, and I hope you don't look at me funny. But in this whole situation, I'm like, wow, I'm amazed because I want to fix it. Like I want the skills to work in that, like what is that? Mm -hmm. So yeah, that day I went home, I'm like, yeah, baby, you were right. <laughs> I'll go back to school, I got you, I got yeah, you. Yeah, yeah so that, that's how it happened. Wow, wow, it's, it's remarkable how, I think the two, the, the many parts of ourselves feed your, you know, feed our, our work, our passion, and for you, it's, it's really um, interesting seeing that relationship between your work as a therapist, your work as an artist, and they really influence one another, I think, as I see, at, at least I see that in the paintings, you know? Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I'm thinking we, we have, I want to open up some questions, I imagine that folks might have questions for Lamar, but um, I'm wondering, before we do that, like, what's, I'm wondering what's next for you? What's next? Yeah. Um, let me see. So I am, I am a therapist. I'm a self-employed therapist. We'd be counseling and consulting. Uh, so I do that. Um, I teach painting at Duke now. Uh, let me see. I have a few more shows coming up. Um, public, well, that was just announced a few nights ago. A public art piece coming up at um, Dorothea Dix in the fall. I don't know. I'm just out here in these streets, man, trying to, trying to survive. <laughs> <laughs>
That's really exciting. I'm excited. I saw the the, the Dix announcement. That's gonna be good. Thank you. That's really thrilling. Thank you. So. Oh, and my this is very premature, but I think like my next body of work title um, title. So, um, see, I mean, answer more question. The, <laughs> That is, I know we're looking at this, but that the the, the new body of work I'm, I'm considering, as a people, specifically black people, and we talked about how now it's like the one of the first times that we're able to breathe and have just a little and have this peace and rest, right? So Monday, we think of as this to work right time for the week to start getting to it uh, but there was this one Monday there was one Monday we had a my family we wife and kids we had a photo shoot scheduled and of course like any family with small kids the schedule is not what you thought it would be so we missed the photo shoot it's like well kids are cute we look good let's just go to the park and snap some stuff and for to see the kids like run around in this this field of grass and wildflowers and that sort of thing like to have that sense of peace it never happens to slow just slow down and stop and spend time with them when does that happen to just stop life after we leave here we're going to go do some stuff Move, 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 move. Where is that peace? Where is the peace when you don't have someone calling you out of your name, right? When you don't have a, a someone screaming down your back, or you don't think, oh, I'm afraid to get pulled over, or that sort of. Where is that peace? So, the new body of work I'm, I'm working on is yeah, Monday. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for sharing. I imagine somebody has some questions. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little louder, a little louder. I do, I do uh, incorporate art into my practice, right? Like now I have clients like war vets, recovering memory and that sort of thing, drawing pictures and painting, right? Just the other day, Tuesday, we're sitting there drawing and all of a sudden a memory from like literally 40 years ago my man stops and solve. Like, thank you. Drawing a picture, a picture from way back when, and because you can't remember, psh, yeah, that's gold. So, yeah, art therapy, I may not say art therapy, but yeah, I, I, I do it, I engage. Uh, did I answer your question? Um, I was just, um, no, go for it. Yeah, I mean, how do you also like balance like doing your own artwork and then you said you teach classes at Duke as well? Yeah. And then also doing like therapy and other things like that. Yeah. And the practice. How do you like, what's your work day look like with all Crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's crazy. I, um, going back to the discipline, there's a discipline and like a grit to go for it. And then there's a discipline to stay on track. I figured out how to use the calendar and reminders in my phone. Right? So that's that's really trying to eat. I catch a 20-minute nap every once in a while. It's not healthy. Please don't take this advice. <laughs> but, yeah, that's that's it. Trying to, I would say, if, if you're interested in that, um, Question your friend group. <laughs> Sorry, 
Oh, it's all good, brother. We all sneeze. Really question your friend group. Not not saying get rid of people and all that, but have people around you who are going to hold you accountable even if you're wrong. Right? And then there's a choice to do the same for yourself. That's, that's basically accountability and determination. I just do... I just do what I'm good at, for real. Yeah, that was. You said your professor was in here? What? Okay. I really might. I'm sorry. In advance, I'm sorry. I heard a quote a few days ago that says, they say, uh, art, yeah, they, they, the person created, they said, art was easier before I knew how to do it, before I knew how to create. So when you say thumbnail sketch and that's out the window for me. And I probably should say that because I actually teach paint. But anyway, yeah, that's that's out the window. I have um I take a gang of pictures all day, every day. It's like an addiction. I just snap stuff. Like, oh, that's cool, especially when the kids or my wife is doing something. So I take that whatever that image is, the 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 concept, the the emotion, all of that. That's what's poured into it. There's never really a sketch for me. And I probably could incorporate that, but it's never really there. So a lot of what I do is intuitive. I start, I have an idea, I put it, I sketch it out. Like I said, I write, I do all this stuff, and then I just, it is what it is. Because there's a sense of discovery, right? Like art is, art is an interesting thing because, like, yeah, you can create to, figure out some sort of formula like oh I can make I created this so now I can make like 12 of them sure but then even in that one and you're gonna make 12 of them there's still this discovery and growth and challenge in each piece that I go for so yeah the, the sketch the thumbnail I don't really do that I apologize. You didn't contradict anything. I'm just, I've recently said. <laughs> <laughs> We're working on a piece right now that they did practice pieces, but they, I'm trying to get them to tap into the play and experimenting yeah. and just seeing what happens in the process. So, yeah. thank you. You don't have to apologize. Okay. okay. <laughs> but uh, and going on that point, I think life in a lot of ways, I got you. Life in a lot of ways is just like, just like this, these paintings, right? Where, like, yeah, you're in school now and you're, you're going through classes and you're doing stuff, but then all of a sudden you graduate and life just throws you another curveball. How do you respond? You said cry? Cry. Shoot, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I cry all the time. Happy, sad, just why not? Tear ducts work. But I think life is the same way. You, you experiment, you try things, you, you discover. And the things you discover, negative or positive, you apply. Y'all can rock, paper, scissors if you want to. <laughs> you really gonna do it. That's what's up. <laughs> oh, they're going again. <laughs> Two or three. This is good. There we go. There we go. Go for it.
That's what art is. If art doesn't move you, what's the point? Even if it's just a circle on the pe- on the on the wall, it's just like a red circle. Like if it doesn't evoke some, just just make you feel something. I feel like it's pointless. Like some things could be commercial and that sort of thing, but even in being commercial, they 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 encourage you to buy something. That's emotion. I need to purchase this thing. Yeah, if it doesn't, if there's no emotion tied to it. Make more work. That's the answer. As an artist, it's almost like being a singer, or you may not make a complete song, but you have to. Let's make a sound. Let's make a sound today. Like you already have an idea of what to do, like an unfinished song or you have to concept. Yeah. And I'm speaking for a personal, speaking from a personal perspective, right? When there's a block or something else, let's say, for instance, I paint this show. Painting, painting, painting. I'm tired of scrap of painting. Now I pick up a pencil and I might draw some stuff. Or you grab some stuff and you might put some stuff together, like, right? But you continue to work. I'm always amazed by people like, uh, <laughs> like a Andre 3000 or um, like a LeBron or LeBron James or like a Michael Jackson. People who can do multiple things, like sing, produce, direct, and just a lot of stuff because that's the, I mean, that's what it is. Yeah, don't, don't quit. Find another way to, once it, once one thing dies down, like I'm burnt out. If you really, really want to do this thing, keep going. Yeah. Pace yourself. Ask them, brother. I'm just answering them. If I create it all day, every day, I would be a trash father. So, in talking about the calendar and that sort of thing, I drop my kids off to school every day. I pick them up from the bus stop, that sort of thing. There, there are times they get home from school, I play video games with my son, I'm doing playing connect four with my daughter just when they're home they're home and that's their time when my time is with my wife that's my time nothing else people will tell you like if if you text me and i might take a few hours or even a day to text you back that's what it is because when i get home my phone goes i might put it on the charger and that's where it is Yeah, that's what it. That's what it is. You have to 
plan accordingly and respect that time. Because I don't know, I, I think it'll be kind of selfish of me not to consider that. Yeah. every parent does yeah there, there's always this this strain like man i want to i really want to go take this nap but they want to play god that's a real right like that's a real feeling um so yeah every, every once in a while there's a tug there's a tug but i i do understand too that there's an investment in them and to invest in them is way more beneficial than investing in this. Because this stuff can burn down now. It can be destroyed just like this. With those children and what she feels when they look at me and when they're around me, that can't be purchased. So that's the, that's the investment. And the cool thing about it, too, is that when I give to them, they give way more back to me. Okay. Are, are you a parent? I'm not, but I'm sorry, I'm a person that tends to really give and give. And I'm afraid that when I do become a parent, I will lose myself. You will. <laughs> <laughs> you will. <laughs> but there's a there's a um like we talk about boundaries and that sort of thing um you'll you'll give and be spread so thin you'll lose every, you'll lose yourself and you you might it's like who am i but to take the time to to take the time to figure that out that's the magic because you can't give anything to them that you haven't really accumulated right so yeah, forget y'all for like an hour. I need to go do whatever. Yes. So kind of building off of this, you know, this idea, do you ever feel like you, know, you are saying, this is my time to paint yeah. to your family, to your wife, to your kids, but you're also showing them that that, that thing that you value, that you're, you're carving out that time as an example to them yeah. of how to, how to make time for them, the things that they place value on. Right. It doesn't devalue the children because you do this, but it shows them that they have to create the space for each of the things that are of value to them. Right. Do you ever, is that something you think about? Oh, 100%. As an example, you know, yeah. like, hey, this is important to me. I make this space for this. Yeah. I make space for you too. Right. Yeah. A version of them that is trying to be refi like I'm refining that what they had I'm taking and polishing a bit in the same thing for my children so if I don't if I don't practice discipline and balance and uh, love and self-care and chasing your dreams and all this stuff if I don't do it how will they know what to do so yeah I, I have to by default if I want, if I want to, because training a child is not just oh sit down, clean this up, nah. What you say when they're in the other room and you think they're in the other room? Like where did you learn that word? <laughs> what you say, what you do, they see everything. So just being aware. Yes. So this is not really a question, but like comment. Dope hair. Yes. And I was like, yes, I, I remember my mom when I was a kid. It's just so frustrating. We didn't yell at the door. We opened the door. That happens. Ah, I need something. I'm yeah. not. Like, give me five minutes. Yeah. And when I was a kid, I was like, what did my mom do? My life, my team. I'm 
Yeah. 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 The disrespect. Yeah. Thank you. We have time for one more, I think. Okay. Yeah. Babysitter? nothing else to give when when you look at it it's like I really can't I can't do anything else to this like I, I really poured everything like every drip drop I squeezed the lemon until there's nothing else but the skin that's when I know yeah yeah the it's, it's strange but the the work speaks to you. It's, I don't know. It, it, it speaks to you. So I guess the, the writing, the the writing, the paint, it's a conversation between myself, myself, and the canvas. <laughs> so, yeah. Thank you. Well, thank you all so much for coming today, and thank you for your thoughtful uh, questions, and thank you, Lamar, for sharing. Um, and your generosity and your art, sharing your, your work and your process and sharing yourself. We really Thanks for having it. me. Yeah. So cool. Yeah, indeed. Thanks, y'all. There's also some snacks. So yeah, please help yourself. <laughs> no problem. It's cool. Yeah.